an extra video every week, access to me on Discord, and the smug satisfaction that you're partially responsible for keeping a YouTube channel alive and independent. That's gotta be worth a few bucks to you, right? Support the habit at patreon.com slash dose of Buckley. As kids, we're told never give up just because something's too hard, that you need to learn to persevere, to overcome obstacles. If at first you don't succeed, try, try again. That when you get knocked down, you get up again. To never let someone keep you down. No wait, that last one's a Chumbawamba song. But I don't think that everyone should take that advice. For example, Iggy Azalea. Iggy burst onto the scene in 2014 with her album, The New Classic. Much of its success brought on by the song Fancy, which was number one on Billboard for seven weeks. She then had a couple of what I call residual hits. Pretty rare for someone to be that popular and for people to at least not be curious to check out more music. So her next two singles, Black Widow and Beg For It, each did all right, hitting number three and number 27 respectively. And then, well, music fans are a fickle bunch. And despite releasing at least one song every year since then, she was only able to crack the Billboard Top 40 one more time. That song with Britney Spears about how pretty they are. Which I'm sure Iggy had hoped would be a club anthem that girls would request from DJs for years to come. Every girl in the club would shout, We're just so pretty! While slopping white claws all over the dance floor. In that time, she had a little trouble with her record label. Eventually, leaving Def Jam and apparently scrapping most of an entire album. <laughs> I'm sure nothing of importance was lost and then put out an EP that sold 6,000 copies in its first and biggest week of sales. 6,000. In 2019, she put out In My Defense, a full-length album, which fared slightly better at 17,000 copies sold. So, she's decided that maybe it is time to give up, at least for a little while, and she's announced that she's taking a break from music after she releases one more album. The end of an era is so special to me because after I drop my album next month, I'm going to take a few years to focus on other creative projects and things I'm feeling passionate and inspired by, beyond music. I'm excited for you guys to see the different sides to me in the future. Shifting my energy and focus to what I'm most excited about is what's right for me, and I hope you'll continue to support whatever creative projects I'm out here doing. I really love this album, and I just want my fans to enjoy this with me. I hope I see so many of you on tour. Now, before I continue, I should mention that Iggy Azalea has appeared on my worst songs list five times, and has the distinction of being the only person to ever top the list in back-to-back -back years, having the worst song in 2017 with Mo Bounce, and 2018 with Cream. She also appeared on the list in 2014, 2015, and 2016. So, to say that I don't really care much for her music would be an understatement on par with saying they've made a few episodes of The Simpsons or Kenzie Reeves has seen a dick or two in her career. I thought Fancy was awful and its popularity was more due to the hook sung by Charlie XCX than any of Iggy's awful rapping. Along with maybe the music video, which was an incredibly dated reference of Clueless, which I just assumed was because Iggy Azalea is from Australia, and they may have just got the movie in 2014. They're a little behind on getting stuff, like vaccines. But anyway, you won't see me shedding any tears over her leaving the music business. So, almost immediately after she announces this, some clickbait articles come out like this one. Iggy Azalea quits music amid blackfishing controversy. Blackfishing is when you rip off a black style or aesthetic. In this case, rapping in a fake voice that's not your own and kind of sounds like you're imitating someone from a predominantly black southern area. Or maybe making yourself look more black in order to, I don't know, I guess try and gain more credibility with a black audience? As if they're falling for this Amos and Andy routine. Or to sell rap music to the same type of white people who say dumb shit like, I hate rap, but I mean like, Eminem's a legend of course, Macklemore's had a couple songs I liked, and I think Lil Dicky and Jack Harlow are pretty funny guys. And so, she released a new music video called I Am The Strip Club, which may result in a sixth appearance on my list, but in it, well, I mean, here's a screenshot from the video. That's Iggy Azalea, 
black hair, kind of dark skin. She either looks like she's trying to pull a Rachel Dozal, or it looks like Cardi B is auditioning for White Chicks 2, and they haven't finished with the makeup. Someone says to her, People are saying that you are blackfishing and making up this fake narratives. Can you clear them up, please? Because people are taking it too far and running with that lie. And Iggy responds, Oh, I don't care. Fuck those people, babe. LOL. And someone else responds to that with, Okay. And shows a side-by-side -side picture of her. Here she is from the 2014 Billboard Awards, looking as pale as a Scotsman in January followed by a screenshot of this music video where she's surrounded by black individuals looking only a shade or two lighter than them. She responds to another person by pulling out a photo of different shades of makeup on different people's arms and saying, This is the color I wear? It's on the arm color of a tan white person. Says that, Everyone in the club scene looks darker? It's a club scene. And that she's, Sick of people trying to twist my words or make shit a problem when all I've done is try a hair color. It's all just lighting, you guys. Not sure how the lighting affects her voice, but anyway, once you start pulling out pictures of fucking swatches, you might be losing the battle. But let's go back to her statement about how she doesn't care. Because she really doesn't care. In an interview with GQ, when asked about feeling responsible to use her platform to talk about things in the black community, given that she's profited so much off it, she says, I tried not to be too political because I'm an immigrant. I'm on a visa. I'm not trying to go to a protest where they're arresting celebrities and making an example of them because they'll get deported. She goes on to say, well, I should show that I support these things, but I'm not a political activist. Well, I don't want to bring the complications of the world into my arena. Well, I understand why people criticize that because I have a voice in hip hop. Well, I make black music. Well, I don't want people to think it's not something I care about. I want to make music for girls in the gym. She wants to profit off music pioneered by black entertainers, filter any substance out of it, and make it for girls in the gym. But she doesn't want to stick her neck out for anyone because that could mean an end to those profits. What little are left. But for anyone surprised by this, I've been talking about this since 2014. This is her whole gimmick. I'm really enjoying doing this accent, but her real voice is like, Hi, I'm Iggy Azalea. I just spent the weekend with my good pal Bindi Irwin. We were eating fairy bread in Lamingtons while washing down a wallaby. And then she raps going, Who dat, who dat? And saying homie in a bunch of songs and shrugs and goes, well, I don't know what everyone's on about. She claims in the GQ interview, I've been in America since I was 16. I'm about to be 28. America is going to have an influence on me. I've lived in this country with everybody else. I'm supposed to live here for almost half my life and not be influenced by it? You know, all I want is for her to just fucking admit it. She calls it an American accent. <laughs> Come on. You know exactly what you're doing. It's all I'd like for once in her life to admit it. To stop saying shit like it's an American accent and say, I'm doing a black scent. I'm trying to sound like a black rapper. Shit. She even consciously chose to have her music distributed by Empire Distribution, a label of predominantly black artists making rap, hip-hop, and reggae. Is she going to try and claim that wasn't a choice to try and gain more credibility in an area she probably shouldn't have any? But anyway, she's going to try some new creative projects. So, what will she be looking to pursue next? Well, perhaps she could give acting a try. Maybe she'd like to star in a biopic about Rosa Parks. Or do something with a little more mainstream appeal, like play Storm in the inevitable MCU X-Men movie. Or maybe switch things up, try for a supporting role in Crazy Rich Asians 2. Whatever she does, I'm sure her fans are looking forward to her next blatant ripoff of another culture, boiled and bleached until it's devoid of any real flavor or significance, and made accessible to the type of drooling morons that would still pay $400 to see Iggy Azalea perform in 2021.